Um, so Lepidico is an ASX listed lithium development company. Uh, we're looking at uh, developing a vertically integrated business from mine through concentration to lithium hydroxide production. And we're doing that based on an upstream asset in Namibia and then exporting a lapidolite concentrate to a downstream chemical conversion plant which we're looking at building uh, in Namibia, uh, in Abu Dhabi, which will utilize our proprietary process technologies, uh, LMAX and LOMAX, and I'll get to the, the basis behind those uh, in a minute. We're at a stage where we're very close to completing a feasibility study um, on that vertically integrated project, and we have also successfully piloted our processes and produce some extremely high quality lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide, as you can see there from the slide. We are well funded through to completion of the feasibility study, and that feasibility study, uh, the key results and findings of that will, should be available this May. So this animation that you see here should provide you with a, a good understanding of the company's footprint. We've, we're based in Perth. That's where our technical capability is and pilot plant. Um, the asset, however, that we're relying on for our primary feed is the Carabib project in Namibia. We've got over 1,000 square kilometers of ground here, of which 68 square kilometers is under uh, awarded mining license, and we've also got an environmental compliance certificate, so we're fully permitted uh, in this area. And also note, these are exist former mines, so they've been mined for tantalite and uh, petalite, but not lapidolite. What you see here on the animation is the infrastructure that's been established. We've got a water pipeline nearby, we've got a bore field, there's an all-weather access road, and we, work it, we need to just work out what the power solution is. You can see the old mine infrastructure here in the former open pit at the Rubicon deposit, which is our largest deposit. This is the mineralization, or the, the lithium mica mineralization. It's right at surface. So the strip ratio here in the first th two years of operation is just 0.3 to 1. The ore, will be, uh, the ore will be mined to a new concentrator that you can see there. There's a second ore source that we've got a uh, measured and indicated resource on at Helicon 1, which is seven kilometers away. This is a higher grade deposit, and like, um, but like Rubicon, it has got a very, very low strip ratio. And you can see there the historical workings, that all of the lapidolite has been left behind. So that all will get trucked down to the centralized uh, concentrator, Lithium mica minerals lend themselves to flotation. They're flat, flaky minerals, so we can quite readily produce a lithium mica concentrate. You can see here a very small footprint for this concentrator, and the waste from the concentrator is planned to be co-disposed with the, the waste from the mine, so there's no requirement for a tailings dam. We'll then truck that concentrate, which is grading around 4% Li2O, about 250 kilometers of the port of Volvis Bay, which will then be shipped to Abu Dhabi, where we're looking at building the chemical plant. The reason for the chemical plant being in Abu Dhabi, we are a substantial consumer of sulfuric acid. Abu Dhabi is the world's largest um, producer of sulfur. And we've got an MOU with a local company called Gulf Fluor, and you can see their processing facility there on the animation. We're looking at building our plant right next door. So their sulfuric acid will be pumped straight into our holding tank for this uh, LMAX chemical plant. The footprint for this is about 200 square meters for the whole thing, including ancillary buildings. And it won't just produce lithium hydroxide, it produces a range of byproducts. So all the potassium reports out as sodium sulfate, sorry, sulfate of potash. Uh, we produce an amorphous silica, which can be used as a supplementary cementitious material, cesium, rubidium, and e we're even finding that there may be a local market for the gypsum. There's about 250,000 tons a year of mineral gypsum is imported into the Middle East. What I'd like to focus on here just now is why lapidolite, and how does lapidolite compare as a lithium feed source 
to, to spodumene, which is a conventional hard rock source. So on the left-hand side here, you've got conventional processing of spodumene and a comparison of lipidolite on the right. So a typical spodumene deposit will be grading 1 to 1.4% lithium oxide to produce a 6% uh, concentrate. The main process for that is a dense media separation plant, and then maybe a flotation plant to uh, float off the micas. And typical recoveries from those plants are between 55 and 75%. The highest grade of them, green bushes, achieves around 75%. Most of the rest of them are in there closer to 60%. By comparison, flotation of lithium mica, those flat, flaky mica minerals will concentrate and get very efficient recovery at around 90%. Look downstream to that from chemical conversion. Conventional spodumene involves roasting and calcination, very energy intensive, and then a hydromet process. Typical recovery is about 85%. Our proprietary processes are exclusively hydrometallurgical, and we achieve extraction rates of all of the metals in, um, um, in the lipidolite of over 90%. So we're a much more efficient process and less capital intensive process than um, typical spodumene process. And additionally, we produce a range of byproducts as well. Finally, the carbon footprint here is also a lot lower. So a typical spodumene operation in Western Australia exporting to China has, produces about 14 to 15 tonnes of carbon, carbon dioxide, per tonne of uh, lithium hydroxide produced. A typical brine project is probably five to six tonnes per tonne. We're in there at about eight. And, but that amorphous silica is a supplementary cementitious material, so it can be used to supplement for um, cementing concrete. We should get about a three ton per ton credit for that. So that puts uh, a lipidolite processing lime ball with uh, brines, and we haven't even started to factor in the possibility of solar power generation employed in Namibia and Abu Dhabi. So we should be extremely competitive low carbon producer for the industry. Focusing in our resource, this resource was announced last week. We've now got 11 million tons at uh, around 0.43% uh, lithium oxide. For the first time, we've now got rubidium, cesium, potassium grades uh, in the resource, and most of this resource is in the measured and indicated category. As mentioned earlier, very low strip ratios associated with these, uh, these deposits, uh, and we should have our inaugural ore reserve uh, in April. We've got our LMAX process has already received patent protection in the US. Uh, we expect Australia to come through in the next month or two and the, the other jurisdictions that we've registered uh, later on in the year. Uh, the process uses ubiquitous reagents used in the um, mineral processing. Uh, so it's uh, lime, limestone, sulfuric acid. Um, it's all conducted at atmospheric pressure, and the temperatures that we use are uh, maximum temperatures about 120 Celsius. And as I mentioned, we do get the benefit of uh, byproducts. We see this as being a scalable process as well, um, and it uh, fits with our other process technologies. Here you see the purities that we've managed to achieve uh, from our pilot plant, extremely high specification products there. In the interest of time, I'll kick on to, the, you can see here how the lithium hydroxide process fits in at the back end of uh, the LMAX process. We haven't announced the chemistry behind that, but we will make it available under, under NDA. So the chemical plant in Abu Dhabi is designed to treat about 60,000 tonnes a year of concentrate to produce about 5,600 tonnes a year of lithium hydroxide. We've got an MOU for, with Gold Fluor for the offtake of um, uh, uh, sulfuric acid, and we've also got an offtake arrangement, or an MOU with BASF with offtake for the lithium hydroxide. Finally, uh, I've mentioned that the fact that we've got uh, a very attractive um, uh, carbon footprint here, very low carbon footprint. Uh, we'll be producing about 85 jobs in uh, Namibia and about 120 odd jobs uh, in Abu Dhabi. And as I say, in the interest of time, I'm going to go through these quickly. It's important to note with our process as well, 
the residue from the chemical plant, we're looking at using that as a product as well. So we did some work with the University of Waterloo um, last year in uh, Ontario, and it can be used to rehabilitate landfill sites. It also may be able to be used uh, as a construction material. So in summary, we're looking to fast track this business to free cash generation, commercialize our uh, process technologies and become a sustainable producer of lithium chemical. Thank you.